Hey everybody, Juan here. Welcome to another Power Query tutorial. When you're working with databases in Power Query, generally when you click here in advanced options, you do have the option of passing a SQL statement. And so instead of loading the whole table, you would load whatever is in your SQL statement. And this can be a really interesting feature whenever you have all of your logic already written in SQL, which is quite often the case for me. The thing is, the way that this is presented to us is you just have to type whatever SQL query in here. And whenever that query changes, you just need to copy and paste it and paste it here again and refresh the tables and so on. The best, the best practice really would be if it's possible to dynamically refresh your SQL based on some sort of file somewhere, either in your GitHub, in a server that you have access to, or maybe even in your own computer. What's important is it might, it would be very nice if every change that you do in that file gets automatically reflected in Power Query. And the good news for all of us is that is possible with some M magic. And that is what I want to show you today. So let's go ahead, load this database just quite simply. I want to play with the orders table in this occasion, but in reality, I probably want to get rid of the very last part. So there we have it. This is just completely fake data. Don't worry too much about it. I grabbed it from a public database. So it's also not a crime if you try to ping that same database. When I see here, uh, the command to open a SQL server is a SQL.database, the database server, and the name of the database, which is optional. The interesting thing is almost every type of database command in M has these extra options. And one of these extra options, and you have to enclose this on cur in square brackets, is the word query. Now, when you type the word query, you can pass immediately some sort of string, which contains a SQL query. Um, let's keep it rather simple. And I'm going to get rid of this other part that defines the table. We don't need it for now, at least not for what we're trying to accomplish. Let's get rid of the last comma. And when we try this, now it's it's working. It's just taking most, it's just, yeah, converting the results really to whatever it is in here. And we can test this by adding something else to the query, like where region equal central. When I do this, immediately any reference to something that is not central completely disappears. And this is a rather neat feature. But it would be, as I mentioned, much, much nicer if this would come out of a file, a file like, say, this one that I have here in my downloads. And to accomplish that, we just need to copy the location of the file, which I conveniently added there so that I don't have to look for it later. Create a variable, which I'm going to call file location. Save it as a string in there. And of course, if you're working with multiple scripts, it makes sense that you use some sort of text combine or some concatenation formula to dynamically turn this into a function that only selects the one script that you want at a time. But that will be for another video. For now, let's keep it short and simple. So we have our file right here. Let's see what we get when we point at the file. We have just a string, so nothing so far. Now, the next thing that we have to do is taking the location, just find the actual file. And luckily for us, there is an a command 
which I'm gonna save under a variable called SQL script. The first thing that we have to do is to use this command called file contents and pass as an argument file location, which is the variable we cover above. Now, when I close this, you're gonna see that we're not done yet, but it's now recognizing that this is a file and by clicking on it, I could manually open it. But we still have to take it one step further. So I'm gonna go here to the advanced editor once again, and I'm gonna wrap it into this other command called text from binary. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna transform the content of the file into a string. Getting some sort of yes. Now, let me show you more or less what we have. And now we have as a string, the SQL query in here. Well, actually, I probably sh should save the newest version. The newest version says category. Uh, let's refresh it. And now, okay, once again, it says furniture. So we, we are on the right track. Now the final step is for us to take this source command. Let's indent it properly so that it becomes a bit more readable. And here when it says query, what we're gonna do is completely replace this by our SQL script variable. You can, of course, add some more spaces in case you want, even though I think it's a bit of an overkill. But let's check if this works. And if it works, remember that we're only capturing the category that is equal to furniture. When we go all the way to category, we find that everything says furniture. Okay, it seems that it works. Now let's test it a little bit better. So what if the logic of your script changes and then suddenly and region equal central. I'm gonna save this script once again. Gonna click on refresh. And now the region is equal to central. The category is equal to furniture and we can check the script to corroborate. You, of course, don't need to keep the script here. We could just really uh, nest this into more layers, like instead of creating that intermediary variable, we could do it like this. And as a matter of fact, we don't even need this one either. I think it's a bit easier to work with variables, but in case you don't want to have them or for whatever reason, that's also a possibility. And this should work equally. And it does. So I hope you've learned something today. Uh, this is quite a neat trick for those of you working quite a lot of SQL. And if you want to keep all of your business logic in there in SQL, now you know there's a better way than just copy and pasting the commands. Stay tuned because in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to turn this into a function. Thanks for watching.